Hello everyone, Eric Leamy here. You are watching yet yeah, another video from my secondary YouTube channel slash YouTube vlog in which I present to all of you my sentimental thoughts coming from my heart and my soul and my mental eyeball shenanigans come from my mind and brain. This is EML 77 TV episode number 794. This is the Smackdown recap of August 21st, 2020. And also 205 Live Recap of, of, of the same date. This is the final SmackDown before SummerSlam, but this would be uh, the first SmackDown with the Thunderdome. As Vince McMahon kicks off the Thunderdome, The Fiend arrives, then Braun Strowman arrives, and as they confront each other, Retribution decided to be go crazy and swarm the ring with the two of them in the ring. I figured, these guys are nuts. Those two are the biggest, meanest dudes ever, and the Retribution wants to start. All of a sudden, the Fiend waves bye-bye. The Fiend is gone, and here comes Retribution. They jump on Strowman. The locker room comes out. Chase Retribution out. But, unfortunately, Braun Strowman took his anger out on a couple of people. Drew Gulak and one of the Usos. I forget, was Jimmy or Jay? I think it was Jay Uso. I think Jimmy or sir. That led to Sheamus versus Big E. Big E picks up the win over Sheamus after he was distracted by Corbin's uh, attack on Matt Riddle. And uh, then the SmackDown Tag Team titles were on the line. Cesaro and Nakamura defending against Lucha House Party. Lucha House Party was blindsided from behind before the match as the, they were out there. Cesaro and Nakamura pick up the win and retain the titles. But then there's a little bit of infighting between... Dorado and Kalisto. Kalisto's trying to try to you know question what's going on. Dorado pushes him. They were shoving each other. So will this be break up a lucha house party? We'll we'll find out in the upcoming weeks. AJ Styles got interviewed, and um, we kind of find out that Jeff Hardy was in the trainer's room, and basically um, his knee got hurt, and then. They played the footage while Jeff Hardy and AJ Styles were part of the locker room that uh, did come out and come to the aid of Braun Strowman. And during the uh, melee against Retribution, AJ Styles kicked Jeff Hardy in the back of his right knee. Apparently, Kayla Braxton interviewed him. AJ Styles says easy pickings. And then Mandy Rose got interviewed and was willing to put the feud between her and Sonya the, behind them. And then Banks and, uh, Shasha Banks and Bailey were interviewed by Corey Graves in the middle of the ring. Banks and Bailey usually, um, does their running in the mouth as usual. And they say nobody can beat them. Naomi comes out and goes, which one of you guys want to get beat by me? I can beat both of you guys. And then they were deciding whether or not who's going to go first in defending their title at SummerSlam against Asuka. And um, so Corey Graves suggested a beat the clock challenge. So, the match took place with Naomi versus Sasha Banks. Sasha picks up, up, up the win at 3 minutes and 39 seconds. Then the second match between Naomi and Bailey happened. Naomi picks up the win with only 1, point, 1 minute and 44 seconds. So, Sasha wins the, um, the advantage, so to speak, of going second in her title defense against Asuka. Asuka arrives. She said her thing. And started dancing in the ring. And she looks pretty hot when she dances in the ring. I gotta admit. And then Sonya Deville was interviewed by Caleb Braxton, but Sonya said, I'll do it out there. Dana Brooke showed up, tried to comfort her. Sonya slaps Dana um, Brooke across the face. And then she went out, um, challenged Mandy Rose to raise the stakes in the uh, SummerSlam matchup instead of hair versus hair. No DQ, loser leaves WWE. Now, there's a re the reason why I think... The loser leaves WWE. I think Sonya may take the loss to um, focus on a trial that's about to take place. Um, what happened was some stalker was basically stalking her and another companion living at Sonya's house. And so, because of that and what happened, the look on her face, she may be um, maybe a little bit traumatized over that. It was, a, it was a picture of her not looking very happy, so... I think she's going to take some time off to deal with the situation. And that, that's a very dangerous thing, you know. I mean, I've been a WWE fan for a long time. There's a lot of favorite wrestlers, a lot of favorite 
You know, I got a lot. Of, when it comes to celebrities, man, we got we got to stop. You know, disrespecting them, especially online, man. And, and you know, and what happened to Sonya Deville was not right. I mean, you know, hopefully Sonya Deville can take the time to relax and everything else. So we'll see what happens. Nikki Cross is worried about Alexa Bliss ever since she got in the middle of a feud between uh, Bray Wyatt and Braun Strowman. And uh, so she was very concerned. Intercontinental title on the line, AJ Styles against the hobbling Jeff Hardy. And AJ Styles dominated most of the matchup. And you know, Hardy had a few attacks in. But then things changed when I think JJ Styles went to hit Hardy with a suplex or something like that. Hardy decided to hit him with the brace on the knee. And that, you know, gave Jeff Hardy the advantage. Twist of fate by Jeff Hardy on AJ Styles. Moonsault in the middle. Moonsault on Jeff Hardy. One, two, three. We have a brand new Intercontinental Champion. Congratulations, Jeff Hardy. This is his fifth Intercontinental title win. AJ Styles to complain to Joseph A. Park in the back. So I would not be surprised if a rematch would happen to this, this Sunday at SummerSlam. It all depends on Jeff Hardy is. So this is going to be very interesting to say the least. They had a Futterfly Funhouse. They would try to do a play with uh, Huskets the Pig and um, that bunny dude. I forgot his name. Oh, Ramblin' Rabbit. Ramblin' Rabbit and Huskets the Pig. Um, try to do a Portray Strowman and Alexa Bliss. The play went south. Bray Wyatt did not like that. Strowman arrives, beats up on Bray Wyatt. And then... Took Bray Wyatt to the, to the uh, back of the loading dock, choke slams him off that. We w- and then Bray Wyatt was taken to an ambulance. And as the, they were going, Adam Pierce, I got to give him props, man. Adam Pierce was like, you know, he took charge. He was like, he was like a man who was taking charge and all that. But you know, so I got to give him props. Ever since this pandemic happened, I think Adam Pierce really stepped up as an agent in the WWE. So I, I expect Adam Pierce to get some kind of promotion out of this whole thing. Or something like that. Then, um... Then, as the uh, ambulance was about to go, with Bray Wyatt was loaded into the ambulance, the ambulance backed up. And then, the inside of the ambulance turned red. Out emerges the fiend. That's not ball well. I think him against Strowman, Stroman, that's going to be a humongous fight, a humongous brawl. It's going to be crazy, insane, and everything else in between. I think it's going to be, uh... A huge fight, nonetheless. So, that ends the first SmackDown of Under the Thunderdome on the Amway Center in Orlando. Um, I did try to register, but then I looked at all the rules in there, and me as being fidgety as I am, decided not to. Well, I wanted to join on TV and just, you know, twi- um, I'm still, yeah, so I still have a lot to learn, so, uh, so, yeah, the rules kind of, like, scared me off a little bit, and that could be, because I, cause I get pretty fidgety and all that. What if I have to go to the bathroom and all that, and, you know, this good stuff, and... So, uh... <sighs> Excuse me, man, I'm a little tired. Uh, forgive me, folks. Forgive me, it's 10 to 34 p.m. Um, I usually never sleep until I get my laundry done, so... Um... 205 Live, uh, just, just got over not too long ago. Drake Maverick goes one-on-one with Tahuti Miles. Tahuti Miles! That boy needs, needs not, needs to get some soul glow in it. I mean, he keeps combing his hair. I was like, why don't you try some soul glow or something, man? No, you know, because that hair is all crazy, man. What, uh, so, <laughs> anyways, if he's, if this boy is concerned, if this guy is concerned about his hair and looking good, you're in the wrong profession, buddy. <laughs> I'm telling you one thing. Don't be such a narcissist. But that that proved to be his undoing. Um, him worrying about his hair and all that. And Drake Maverick did end up picking up the win. Hit him, hit Drake Maverick with the underdog, which Drew Gulak compared Maverick to um, Spike Dudley, um, a, pers- a wrestler I honored to meet. In fact, I will never forget the day Spike Dudley entered uh, Ruby Tuesday. That was... That was surreal. It was two thousand. It was two thousand six, and I remember it was a very slow day in the afternoon. Very slow day, and I totally remember it was a Red Sox game when Justin Masterson made his debut for the Red Sox, and Spike Dudley happened to be sitting at the bar and eating a sandwich. So 
I noticed it, and I noticed someone went back in the kitchen, did not freak out. I tried, tried not to freak out. I'm like, trying to breathe. He said, you know who that is? I said, yeah. I still want to, you know, trying to. I'm trying to be professional. I'm trying to, you know, be respectful. I'm trying, trying to be, you know, just be cool. But anyways, um, Drew Gulak brought his name up. I said, Drew, Drew, despite the fact being attacked by Braun Strowman, you did an awesome job on color commentary. Like I said, Tony Miles is still a rookie. He still needs to learn a lot. Get some so glow for that hair, boy. Oh, hey, man, you know, get some so glow for that hair. That, that hair is crazy. He's out there. Or try to be, you know, or put, or put it in braids like Stevie Wonder or something. Or something like that, you know. I think the hair, your hair is more out of control than a Carlitos. Or a hair is more out of control than Xavier Woods. Man, Tahuti Miles better get that hair. Get that, better get that hair straightened out. Do something to it. Get it cut. No, forget, forget so glow. Get it cut. Get your hair cut, man. Get it cut, bro. Shave it if you have to. So, anyways. Uh, then the second match was Jake Atlas versus Tony Nice. Tony Nice, uh, I'll tell you one thing. His arrogance was a downfall in this matchup. It went back and forth. Tony Nice had the, uh, advantage, advantage in the, ma- most of the times in the matchup, but, um, he made one of little Smith egg. Jake Atlas capitalized on it. You know, as Tony Nice was too busy focused on Drew Gulak, then Jake Atlas picked up the victory. Afterwards, Tony Nese attacked Jake Atlas and grabbed the uh, top of the 205 Live announcing booth near Vic Joseph. And Drew Gulak said, you know what, this this brand is nothing without me, basically. And that's why I put it all in a nutshell. And that is the recap of 205, 205 Live and SmackDown Thunderdome. I thought it was pretty unique, and it, it was unique in a way. The Thunderdome looks, you know, the Thunderdome looks good. You have all these fans, uh, you know, sitting virtually in their seats, just staring at and watching the match. Some of them, yay and going. I think, I, I think another one, uh, another person peeked their heads and said, "Well, what's going on? How you, you know?" Probably, probably curious about the whole thing, but none, nevertheless. So tomorrow night is NXT, and what I'm going to do is right after this video is up. We're gonna, I'm going to jump right into another video. I was going to think of taking a shower and then come back. But I'm going to do that right after, right after I get these two videos done. So I want to thank you guys for uh, tuning in for Raw, I mean for SmackDown recap, uh, WB recap for SmackDown this week. So uh, I am really excited about NXT TakeOver 30. That's, uh, that is tomorrow. And at 7 o'clock. So, and also, AEW is on at 6. So, this is going to be a very interesting Saturday evening. Because I got both these wrestling events. I got stinking uh, Zoom with my church family as well. We usually do like 15 minutes worth. To check, more, more of a check-in than anything else. So, uh, so I will... Uh, Go. Um, I will do that on the next episode. I'm writing writing stuff down to get ready to talk about um, um, to, to to write about for uh, tomorrow's event. So I'll see you guys later. You guys have a wonderful day, a uh, wonderful night, evening. Um, God bless, peace, and I will see you on the next episode, 795. See ya. Have a good night.